So in the previous video, we saw how we can make a model more complex, for instance, by making it a higher order polynomial or adding more um, radial basis functions, for instance. And although those more complex models seem to fit the training data a lot better, in some cases almost perfectly, intuitively it does seem that they won't generalize that well to unseen data points or points that wasn't in the data in which we uh, train the model. We call this overfitting when a model gets an almost perfect prediction on the data it was trained, but clearly won't generalize to new other data points. In this video, I'm going to look at a few more examples of overfitting, specifically in the linear regression case. I should mention that overfitting happens in a whole bunch of other machine learning models as well, logistic regression and in neural networks. Um, but here we're specifically going to see how this happens in the case of linear regression. In the next video, I'm going to talk about regularization, which is one way in which we can combat um, overfitting, especially if we have a model with many parameters. So let's say we want to fit a regression model with a scalar input using basis functions. So it's a model that takes a single input x, and from that we want to predict y. Let's also suppose we have 10 training items. Our goal then is that if we take our parameter vector w and we multiply that with our design matrix, that that result should be roughly equal to the target values in our training data set. This is just a bit of an informal way to basically write the goal of linear regression. Let's say we have two basis functions, and then let's look at the shapes of these different vectors and matrices. If we have two basis functions, then we will have two parameters, w0 and a w1. Our design matrix will have our 10 training items and then the two uh, basis function values for each of the training items. And then our target vector will be um, the 10 target values for our train, 10 training items. So the goal of the game is to choose W so that the result of this multiplication is as close as possible to the Y vector. We won't be able to do this perfectly, but we'll try and get as close as possible according to the squared loss. Now let's say we've got 10 basis functions, and then let's look at the different shapes. If we've got 10 basis functions, then we're going to have 10 parameters here. For each of our 10 training examples, we will have the 10 values from the basis functions, and then our output will still be 10 by one. Now, if you remember from linear algebra days, um, grade one and two in school, then you'll actually realize that this thing is solvable um, exactly. We can actually drop the approximation sign here and just multiply both sides of that equation with the inverse of our phi matrix. So we get this equation and this will give an exact answer to the equation. So you won't have this approximation. This is because we've got 10 equations and we basically have 10 unknowns. So we've got an equation for each of the unknowns. There's a little caveat that you can only do this if phi is actually invertible. So if you do this, what do you think the value of the squared loss will be in this case where we have 10 basis functions? And secondly, do you think this will give good predictions on unseen data, data that isn't in our training data? The short answer is for this little toy example that the squared loss will actually have a value of zero uh, in this case where we have 10 basis functions but the model will actually be quite poor fit to unseen or future data so it won't be making good predictions for future um, data points and when you have this setting where you have a model that fits the training data really well the 10 points that we're training on in this case but it actually does a bad job of generalizing to other data points, to unseen data points, um, when we want to make a future prediction, then that's called overfitting. So in the next few slides, I'll um, give a few more examples of this type of thing and, and hopefully give you an intuitive feel for um, what happens when you overfit to your data. So here we've got a data set to which we fit a quadratic model. In other words, a second order um, polynomial model. 
the prediction actually lo looks quite reasonable given the data set. So what happens when if we fit a 20th order polynomial to the same data set? The model seems to still fit the data reasonably well. It might actually do a slightly better job than the second order model. Some of these points are a lot closer to the prediction from our model. But at the same time, it doesn't look nearly as smooth as we had um, with the second order model. Now let's do that again, but we're going to look at an example with only 10 data points. First, we'll just fit a second order model. And this is the result um, if we get the optimal um, values for the second order model. Um, there's maybe a little bit of a typo here. We've been a little bit sloppy with the notation, but actually, so this should be f of x given the optimal parameters um, w hat. So this is w hat 0, w hat 1, and w hat 2. And we see that the model actually does a very good job of fitting these 10 data points. Now, what if we fit a 10th order model to these 10 data points? Let's see what happens then. So the dashed line here, the squiggly line, shows the prediction from the 10th order model. And for the 10 data points, this is actually a really good model. In fact, it, the model doesn't make any mistake. Each of the data points passes through the model exactly. Okay, so on the one hand, we should be extremely happy on our insights because we've got a model that fits our data perfectly. Right, but then you can also notice an obvious issue with this model, right? What is the type of prediction that we would get for, I don't know, 1.8 here, right? It's somewhere off the charts here, which clearly wouldn't be a good prediction um, for, for that data point. Let's now look at a similar example, but instead of polynomial regression, we use radial basis functions. And in this case, we'll look at this example that I like of the men's 100 meter Olympic winning times. So here we've got the fit of a model um, with radial basis functions. Um, we've got three RBFs, one at 1900, 1950, and the year 2000, and our width parameter is 20. Um, and here we've got the actual Olympic winning, winning times in these years, um, acro across the different years, and here's the prediction of our model. It looks okay, um, it's quite smooth, and we see some of the points are quite close to the prediction of the model. For that model, these are the radial basis functions that I used, so we used a family of RBFs um, with basically three bumps um, as specified by the parameters here. Now let's look what happens when we actually use um, a family with more RBFs. So in this case, I'm going to use RBFs with a little bump at 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930, up to the year 2000. I think that gives us 11 bumps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's right. And we're going to use a width parameter of 10. So they're slightly sharper than the previous example. This is the result when we fit that um, RBF-based regression model to the data. It actually gets closer to a number of the points than in the previous example. If you want to step back, jump back in the video, you can see, for example, this point is a much better prediction with this RBF model. But at the same time, I am getting a little bit worried about the predictions from this model. Now let's lose control of ourselves. We're going to use 101 RBFs with a very sharp width parameter. So we set the width parameter to one. We've got these little sharp bumps all over the place. This is the fit that we get if we use that 101 RBF model on the 100 meters main dash Olympic times. And we see in this case that we're actually fitting all of the data points perfectly. Again, we're passing through each of the data points in our data set. Great stuff, extreme inner happiness but also extreme worry, right? If you look at this and you think this um, missing time at 1914, when the Olympics didn't take place, it was the First World War, do you think this would have been a good uh, realistic winning time in that year? Probably not. Um, I also get really worried about what happens here. You know, the prediction for 2012 when Usain Bolt ran it very, very quickly. He definitely didn't take, I don't know, 11 seconds to do this. That's what I run the 100 meters in. That's a lie, but anyway, um, the prediction year would be really, really bad. 
So I hope you're convinced that this problem of overfitting actually exists, that it actually happens, especially when we make a model complex, right? When you have a higher order polynomial model or a, a model that has a very large family of radial basis functions. In the next video, we're going to look at regularization, which is one way in which we can still have, for example, uh, um, a model with 101 radial basis functions but we will constrain the model in some way so that it doesn't make these extreme predictions like the ones that we're seeing on this slide.